The AFL is under fire tonight after North Melbourne star Mad Jack Daw almost died when he plummeted from the Balti Bridge. The AFL world is in shock tonight after the death of football great Danny Frawley, killed in a car crash in country Victoria. Everyone in my life is telling me how good I've got it. And I'm just absolutely 100% miserable. So mental health is back in the footy news with Bailey Smith taking an indefinite leave from the Bulldogs to work on his mental health issues and this needs to be talked about. So I'm kind of going to do three things here. I want to talk about how mental health issues have been covered in footy, what we can do as a footy community to support these players and then what we can do to support each other just as a community. So let's get stuck into it. So a brief history of mental health in footy pretty much started in 2004 when former Hawthorne vice captain and later on kangaroo tall forward Nathan Thompson withdrew from a game against Fremantle due to his depression and anxiety issues. Now, if you're wondering why this didn't happen earlier, it's because players were too afraid to come out and say, this is what's wrong. And to prove it, Tomo in 2011 said this. I thought it was a weakness in me and I, I definitely didn't want anyone to think that I had a you know some sort of soft underbelly or there was uh, something uh, something wrong with me you know because I really felt that I you know I was deep down I felt that I was sick and like a lot of things in life once one person comes out and says something more that agree with the sentiment follow from there we learned about Heath Black's problems especially when he ran into trouble with the law and he's turned his life around which is fantastic Jake Edwards was drafted by Carlton in 2005 and nearly a decade later had tried taking his own life. All of the examples mentioned in the opening of this video, Alex Fasolo's come out and talked about it, Darren Jolly's come out and talked about it, and a smattering of other players that I know I haven't mentioned here. So to all the players that have come out and talked about your mental health issues that I haven't already mentioned here, I do sincerely apologise. And the latest has been Bulldog star Bailey Smith. So I want to talk about a few things about how this is being handled. Before I get to the attention factor, the two things that I do want to touch on is the altercation that he had in Queensland. Now, Smith was involved in an incident, but the police didn't even speak to him, let alone charge him. So he's not escaping from anything. And the second thing is drugs. Number one, never assume a mentally ill person is also having drug abuse problems. And number two, if it is the case then Bailey Smith deserves all the help that he needs and his footballing future should be in doubt. But if the drug thing is true, then he still needs help. Anyone in this world that has mental health issues that are struggling with drug abuse also need help. We are a society. Shunning people for this is ridiculous. But let's turn to the attention factor. Now, I think everyone under the age of 25 that has talked to people about their mental health issues, someone has told them this. Someone has said you're either making it up, exaggerating it, saying it for attention, whatever it is. And if you've ever thought this about someone, I'm not here to tell you that you're garbage or anything like that. I just want to change your perspective a little bit, give you something to think about. If they're not making it up, then they're mentally ill and they need help. This person that's come to you. That's a fact. If they are making it up for attention... They're mentally ill because that is not a mentally sane thing to do. There are no mentally sane people on this planet that are waking up and formulating plans to make up mental health issues. So if someone has come to you and is trying to explain their mental health issues to you and you're thinking that they're making it up, they still need help. Bailey Smith has talked about his mental health issues pretty much since he was drafted. So if he's coming out of the draft and making it up, he needs the help. But I promise you, he ain't making it up. So the other incident that's happened that made me really want to talk about this is something that is actually tragic. But Dustin Martin lost his dad Shane this week. Now, that is one of the most horrific things you can do. Losing a parent really sucks. Dusty's going to be devastated. But here's my question. Why is he receiving so much more love, condolences, and most importantly, sympathy from people in 2021 when he lost his parent than he did in 2018 when he opened up about his anxiety and his depression? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Losing a parent is horrific. 
losing yourself is not okay. I don't have any new superlatives to describe how much losing yourself destroys you. If we give people more love for losing someone else than themselves, is it going to take a player ending their own life for this to become more of an issue? Look at Danny Frawley. Spud was one of the best entertainers in footy media history and will be forever. And he did talk about his mental health issues openly. And he still lost his battle. And we didn't have a Spud's game when he was alive. We didn't have mental health awareness weeks when Spud was alive. But we've got them now. And although Spud's legacy is going to be something that is incredible and will live on forever, and if you haven't listened to the two-hour tribute, that link will be in the description as well. It is fantastic. Please listen to it. But we need to be able to keep these messages alive while the people are. And in terms of footy, I think this Bailey Smith thing has come out and proven that we aren't there yet. So how do we get there? Well, first thing that we need to do is need to accept that people that are really suffering from these conditions aren't making it up, first of all. Um, and the second thing we need to do is not assuming why people are going through these issues. The question can't be, why are you feeling like this? The question can be, what can we do to either stop making you feel like this? What can we do to make you feel better? What can we do to make you feel comfortable? What can we do? What can we do is going to be the biggest question that we can ask. Now, what can we do for Bailey Smith? I'm guessing not much. Fingers crossed that the big Baz Lenker has got the support network around him that can get him through whatever he needs to get through. And fingers crossed he's got the professional help that is going to get him to the best person that he can be. Whether that's an AFL footballer or it isn't. But big Baz Lenker, me, you... Anyone in your life that's going through mental health issues all deserve to be the best versions of ourselves no matter what. And the best version of ourselves when we're still here rather than what people's versions of us when we're not here. So that leads me to my final point. With everyone that's supporting the Big Baz Lenka and anyone else that is going through this, they've probably got a big support network around them. And if they don't, I personally hope that they can find that. But now I want to talk to you. All of these messages that you get, check in on your mates, ask if they're all right. Yeah, that's fine, but that's like saying the first part of a bolognese is a clean chopping board. I mean, you're technically right, but that's not the end of the process. We need to be able to listen. We need to be able to be pushed away for people to bring their walls up. We need to be able to understand that people aren't just going to drop every bit of insecurity about themselves and lay everything that's troubling them onto you. People that are fighting mental health issues have been doing so for a long time alone. Allowing other people in is going to be difficult. So if someone is struggling to open up to you and you really care about them, you need to be prepared for them maybe to be a dick. Follow it up with, how's your job been going? How's your love life going? How's home life going? How's the family life going? And if they at any point are saying things that aren't that positive, you need to let people know you're there, but then you need to prove it. Be there for people. It is no good to anyone loving people more when they're dead than when they're alive. It makes no sense. People that are struggling don't want to die. They want the pain to stop. Wayne Schwoss is the best example of this I've ever seen. His open mic episode is amazing and please watch it. It's on KO. It's there. Search up open mic. You'll find it. To any player that comes out. AFL, AFLW, coach, assistant coach, trainer, water boy. I don't care. Anyone wants to come out and say they're struggling. It's okay to. The links to free professional resources that can help you are in the description. My DMs on Twitter and on Instagram are completely open to anyone. You do not need to follow me. You do not need to like anything I've ever posted. You don't need to subscribe to anything. You don't need to be a subscriber of me now. You really don't. 
I don't care if you are. I care if you're okay. If you need someone to talk to and someone to be an idiot around for a bit, I am perfect for that. If you need to have a serious chat, I'm here for that. We're four days off Christmas. For the next seven days as I'm recording this, 16.5% of all suicides in Australia are going to take place. And if you're listening to this right now, I am not letting you become one of them. The offer is there. That is my Twitter, and that is my Instagram. If you really are at a stage where it's easier to talk to a stranger than a friend, message me. You are not a burden. You are loved. You are special. You're a fucking legend. And I love all of you. Have a very safe Christmas holidays, whether you celebrate it or not. I've got a few things going on over the Christmas break, so I will see you afterwards. And I know that I'll see you all there. Take care. Be well. See you later.